Коллеги, добрый, добрый день. Мы рады вас приветствовать на... Коллеги, hello. We are happy to welcome you at this workshop dedicated to teachers' leadership in Kazakhstan, projection to the teachers' leadership in Central Asia. As you can see, we are broadcasting our presentation from the Almaty Cluster Bureau of UNESCO. We are, there are so many of us. Maybe I wouldn't really try to introduce all of the people, all of the participants. Well, along with the order of presentations, we will try to present all of the speakers, introduce all of the speakers. Should you have any questions of the technical nature, please write to us via chat since there are so many of us out here. Well, according to some of the preliminary estimates, we're going to have about 200 participants, 200 delegates. So far, we've got 39 participants, but gradually as they join, please write to us in chat. Our broadcast will also be recorded. The whole event will be recorded and we'll share with you this video recording all of their presentations you are going to see today. They are going to be divided. Uh, well, they're going to be shared with you via a QR code. You will be able to upload those, uh, download those. Uh, so if you haven't seen one particular slide, we will try to share with you all of the materials via this QR code. And you will be able to you will be able to get all of your presentations and well uh, teachers guides and russian uh, teachers leadership guides in russian and english so the translation is available if you want to listen to this presentation in english you can do so please choose uh, the globe icon interpretation function and choose the language of your liking the main meeting is going to be happening in Russian. So hence, I believe that with these kinds of instructions, we can already start. Again, I'm happy to welcome you today. Today we have present online the representatives of from four countries, uh, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan, and Uzbekistan. Thank you very much for finding time to join us. At this meeting, we have present teachers, uh, school administration, practitioners, researchers, development partners in the area of education, uh, the policy developers, and NGO representatives for the region of Central Asia. Well, since we are running a little late because of the technical issues let me now give the floor to mr amir piric acting director of almaty cluster bureau of unesco in almaty amir over to you thank you i'm happy to welcome you at this meeting rewarded to the teachers leadership initiative in kazakhstan and future of teachers' leadership in Central Asia. This initiative has been supported by CAPS Unlock, Schools for All, and Health Committee. We are pleased to have teachers and educationists from the four Central Asian countries, Uzbekistan, Tajikistan, Kyrgyzstan, and Kazakhstan. UNESCO recognizes the central role of a teacher. We, are, we all know the famous statement that the quality of education cannot be higher than the quality of teachers. UNESCO supports teachers' education and professional standards globally to ensure quality education for all and meeting the education targets for 2030 agenda. These initiatives include the cost in the International Task Force on Teachers for Education, also known as the Teachers Task Force, a unique partnership created in 2008 to advocate the teachers and the teachers' profession. UNESCO actively supports all four states in meeting commitments on teachers and teachers' education made in the National Transformation Education Summit back in 2022. 
In the region, UNESCO also supports the review of teacher policies together with the Ministries of Education and the World Bank. It is important to acknowledge the education reform can only be successful if they're led by teachers and when the tone in teachers' professionalism is set by teachers and by no one else. Empowering teachers and creating conducive environment for them to practice leadership remains the key for our region. In this relation, I'm happy to inform you that the Kazakhstan government has allocated some funds to continue support for teachers' leadership in rural schools in Kazakhstan and continuation of what has started several years ago by Health Camp and Caps Unlocked. And I apologize if I don't pronounce these two acronyms properly, but um, the, this uh, <clears throat> initiative directly meets the priorities identified in education concept for Kazakhstan. I believe other countries will follow to support this initiative. Finally, I hope that this meeting will be a starting point for a regional collaboration on teachers' leadership initiative that will support teachers as agents of change in education reform across our countries. And at the end, Rahmat and Rahmat, and I wish you a very productive meeting today. Спасибо большое. Спасибо, Amir. Amir, thank you very much. Colleagues, I would like to introduce our next speaker today. For us, this is great pleasure and honor to welcome Mr. Dr. David Frost here in Central Asia. Yesterday, we just finished our other conference at the Women's Pedagogical University in Almaty, where David also represented the International Initiative Teachers Leadership. And we also launched this particular book, which you are going to be able to download online, uh, Kazakhstan Teachers Leadership, the Initial Experience in Teachers Leadership in Central Asia. This resource is going to be available for you. Just a few words about David. Who is he? He's the director and a member of the Council of Trustees of Hearts Camp. Uh, the concept itself on non-positional leadership of teachers, uh, this is where this concept was born, and then it spread around uh, the whole world. So right now we can already see that teachers' leadership as an initiative is spreading worldwide. And with the great pleasure, we would like to inform you that this initiative has also reached the region of Central Asia. And since the year of 2019, this initiative has been, um, uh, uh, is being implemented in Kazakhstan. While due to David and his team, we trained lots of teachers in Kazakhstan. So we kind of hope that we will have an opportunity to spread the, replicate this project across entire Central Asia. David, I'm not gonna be afraid to say that. He is a teacher with a capital letter T, capital T teachers. We know the well-known phrase I'll, uh, I was uh, saying, he trained multiple generations of teachers and researchers while being at Cambridge University and then uh, also uh, spreading his ideas both via hearts camp network and the international teachers leadership network so david thank you very much to you and uh, ultimately you let me add that we're going to share with you all of his information you will be able to communicate to david directly on this i'd like to give the floor to the teachers with the capital T, Mr. Dr. David Frost, over to you. And we show Mr. Frost's presentation, please. Thank you, Nurbek. Um, as I think Nurbek has explained, um, I've had a long career uh, finishing with the University of Cambridge. I was a school teacher in the 70s, became a university academic in the 80s, and uh, I retired from the University of Cambridge, but it is my privilege to remain connected by being an Emeritus Fellow. 
So I currently am continuing to be a co-director of uh, HeartsCam Network, which is an independent charity. Um, we, are, we are simply a small charity in the UK, but we've had the privilege of working with partners in many other countries under the banner of international teacher leadership. And I guess the best example of work within the international teacher leadership framework is the Teacher Leadership in Kazakhstan initiative. And throughout these uh, programs, next slide, please. Uh, throughout these programs, we have pursued the goal of non-positional teacher leadership. Let me just explain the term. Non-positional teacher leadership simply means that anybody can do it. You don't have to have a position in order to exercise leadership. So in our programs, we welcome colleagues who may be teachers, who may be assistants to teachers, who may be have formal leadership positions. It doesn't matter. But the, the main point is that my work over the years has been uh, working on this problem. Can enrolling on an academic in-service course enable teachers to become agents of change? Because that was my experience when I was a school teacher, enrolling to do a master's program and so on, and wanting to make change happen. So what we, uh, next slide, please. So this has a history. It goes back to the, the 1980s, the beginning of it in the 1980s. And you can see from those titles of those publications that we have been working on the problem for many years. It hasn't simply been created on the back of research. It's been created by working in partnership with colleagues in schools and uh, trial and error, learning how to do it better and better. Uh, and the idea of teacher-led development work eventually emerged as a methodology. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Uh, and you can see that uh, over the years, uh, we began to embrace the language of teacher leadership, uh, particularly important working in inter international contexts where the term teacher leadership was known, but we had a particular way of talking about it, which was the non-positional teacher leadership. You might say that seeing teachers as agents of change is a better language. It really doesn't matter in your own country the, the form of language that you use to describe this phenomenon uh, really depends uh, on the context. Next slide, please. <clears throat> so we've uh, done programs like this um, in many places. In the Western Balkans, there were many programs, particularly in 2008 to 12. Um, later on, uh, we had Greece, and Portugal, Romania, and Turkey joining the European countries. And beyond that, uh, Egypt, Palestine, Kazakhstan, of course, and my colleague Gul Gulmira Kanai uh, began in, in Taras, uh, and then we were asked to conduct another experiment in Kokshetau. We've also set up programs in Malaysia and Morocco, and more recently, we've begun to work in those countries at the bottom of the screen there, Brazil and so forth, uh, in collaboration with uh, in Education International. So, um, next slide, please. Let me explain why teacher leadership as a whole. And it's very popular in America to talk about teacher leaders uh, because it's thought that teachers are the ones who are so close to practice. Um, if you want to transform the education system, you have to uh, enable reforms to be implemented. You have to enable continuous school improvement to take place. And it's the teachers themselves who need to be mobilized to take on those challenges. And these problems can't be solved purely by policy. They need to be, in the end, uh, enacted in practice. So in order to do that, we have to enable the schools to become the kinds of organizations which allow teachers to lead change. Next slide, please. Yes, my... It's one thing to talk about the reason for teacher leadership, but the particular reason for non-positional teacher leadership is important. Okay. In the American system, if you just select a handful of people, maybe one or two people in each school to be the teacher leaders, then it seems to be a problem. You have to provide them with training. You may have to pay, uh, provide extra payment, salary, and so forth. And, and besides which, not only is it costly, it's wasteful. 
because if you have a, a team of 70 teachers in a large school and only two of them are teacher leaders, well, what do the rest do? Remain passive? It's not very uh, cost effective, is it? So if we want to transform the system, we've got to mobilize every colleague's moral purpose and their capacity to exercise leadership. Now, with the right kind of support, everybody in the school can begin to work on their own practice and in the process can become a different kind of a teacher. In, in the language here, they can enhance their professionality. Next slide, please. Uh, thank you. So the term professionality is sometimes misunderstood. It is not the same as professionalism. Professionalism implies something to do with the, how well you perform the, the task of being a teacher. What I'm interested in here is the way teachers construct their identity, if you like, how they construct the view of their role, its focus, its scope, and how they enact it. So they have their values and their beliefs about what a teacher should be, but they also enact it in their practice. That is their professionality. And what I'm suggesting is that if we enable teachers to become agents of change, they, they adopt a new uh, and enhanced professionality. Next slide, please. So how do we empower uh, and enable anyone working in a school to become an agent of change? Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Okay, so in HeartScam and in the international, oh, sorry, in HeartScam and, and international teacher leadership programs in general, we've been using what we have begun, uh, we be, began, be, began to call teacher-led development work methodology. We started using this term in 2003, uh, and it seems to work very well. People seem to understand it. It is teacher-led, and it's about development work. Next slide, please. So the rationale for this particular methodology is that teachers, generally speaking, don't feel able to be agents of change. Teachers don't necessarily have that confidence. Sometimes they feel demoralized, deprofessionalized. So even those who have already uh, been given a formal leadership position struggle to exercise leadership. They don't necessarily know how to do it. And schools need uh, strategies. Of course, every school principal will say this. They need strategies to improve the, the quality of classroom practice. Uh, and I suggest that award-bearing programs, they have the potential to enable teachers to become agents of change. But for many, an award-bearing program, an academic program can be disempowering. So what the teacher-led development work methodology is all about is empowering and enable, enabling teachers. Next slide, please. So let me just go through some of the conceptual thinking that underpins this methodology. First of all, the most important is moral purpose. Like Michael Fullan uh, said many years ago, uh, every teacher, if you scratch the surface of a teacher, you will discover they have a strong moral purpose. It's sometimes perhaps uh, diminished, forgotten about, but it's there somewhere. People went into the profession because they want to do good for young people and for society. They have a sense of agency. We do, as human beings, all of us have agency. We have that capacity to make a difference. Now, with, with this methodology, what we're doing is to recognize the agency, to draw from it, and in giving the support, enhancing people's agency, their, their power to make a difference. And we do this by enabling them to lead change through projects. So project work is particularly important because if the agenda is open, there are too many things to do something about, the teacher may feel defeated. But if you say to the teacher, let me help you design, plan a project over a particular period of time, then everybody can do that. Everybody can plan a project. It's important for the support, though, that they belong to some kind of community. That community could be a group within a school. You may call it a professional learning community. But it's also important to belong to a wider community, a network, for example. In our country, the HeartsCam network provides 
that environment for people from different schools to come together and talk and share. And in Kazakhstan, these last two days, we've experienced a wonderful community at uh, the, the Kazakh uh, National uh, Pedagog Women's Pedagogical University, where again, teachers and others came together. So that sense of community is supportive. It enables people to engage in the reflection, the dialogue, the workshop activities where they talk with each other about what they're trying to achieve in their projects. Um, it provides that support to enable them to critique each other's projects in a friendly sort of a way. This makes it possible, therefore, for all the people participating, not only to change things, but to share their knowledge about what they're learning through that, to, to tell stories to each other about not only the, the, the process of their project, but, but the, the outcome, what they have managed to change uh, and build uh, in terms of their new practice in their school. And what we find is that finally, those who have been through this process of leading change, telling stories about change, they become confident that teacher leadership is the way forward. And they become activists themselves, engaging in advocacy, talking to, to, to groups far and wide about the value of teacher leadership, and uh, really helping to run the organization. So the HeartsCam network is run by a management team who are all teachers, uh, not, not myself. Next slide, please. So let me just be clear about what I mean by development work, because sometimes people think we must be talking about inquiry. Well, that isn't clearly the case. We're talking here about uh, a process that the teacher leads, which is a strategic process. It's, it's thought out, it's planned ahead, it's focused on a particular problem. It's very deliberate steps of action to bring about improvement. It involves collaborative processes, working with colleagues, uh, consulting people, negotiating with people, reflecting and engaging in self-evaluation and deliberation, which takes place in planned sequence. Now, I use the term deliberation in the way John Dewey used to use it. You know, it's discussion and decision-making, working with your colleagues to take steps uh, forward to improve practice. Thank you. Next slide, please. So the step-by-step -step process is important. In TLDW, we don't assume that every teacher knows what they want to change or how to change it. So we work through a series of steps, the first and most important of which is that they learn, they clarify what is of most importance to them. We say, what is your concern? What are you concerned about? What's important to you? This is a really important question. It kind of releases uh, agency in the individual. But it isn't that they just invent something and say, oh, I think I want to change such and such, and that's it. No, we say, OK, now talk to your colleagues, consult with your colleagues about that thing that concerns you, that problem you think that it exists in the school. Talk to your colleagues about it. See whether that changes your view of what it is, and then begin to plan a project. And when you plan your project, again, consult with co colleagues about the practicality of that plan, about whether they would like to join with you and collaborate with you in that plan. And when you've done that, you know that you can lead a project that's going to work with colleagues in that school. You know it'll work because you've already consulted everybody. So eventually you're able to lead that project and then begin to share the narrative of it, tell the story of it, not only to your colleagues in the school, but to colleagues in other schools. So it's really helpful if this is a, a particular project, focused, time-bounded, one well-designed and well-documented. Uh, and in our tradition, we enable teachers to document what they do in a portfolio form, so they don't have to write uh, academic papers. Next slide, please. Now, the key to this is good facilitation. Um, you'll notice that I don't use words like training, which is very common. Uh, we use the word facilitation because someone has got to be able to enable the group to be formed, the community, the safe space where teachers can come together and work together on their particular problems. It means that, that it's a careful uh, role that some experienced teacher may play. It could be somebody outside of the school, of course, but somebody has got to be able to create that environment, use workshop tools, activities in which teachers can reflect together, have dialogue together, in which they are not 
uh, put down or, or judged. They're simply enabled to talk to each other, critique each other, support each other. Um, they go through this, this process because the facilitator is enabling them to do so. The, the facilitator is not telling them what to do. The facilitator is not instructing them, but the facilitator is enabling them to talk it through for themselves and come to their own conclusions. There's usually also a bit of one-to-one -one coaching, which, which helps outside of the group sessions. Uh, and I think the, the people who participate in it, the, the teachers who do this, they learn how to lead because they reflect within the, the safe space of the group. They reflect on their attempts to lead change in their school and they help each other to make sense of it. So facilitation is the key. Next slide, please. <clears throat> so what sort of impact might we hope for? Well, the participating teachers, as I've said, that this will experience will be transformative for them. Their professionality will be enhanced. They will probably become more effective in the classroom, but certainly more effective in the way they work with their colleagues, in the way they influence their colleagues, in the way that they can make change happen. And practice, of course, in the classroom is what it's all about. And these projects will all be transformative, not only of the teacher who's leading the project, but the colleagues who have been brought into the project to work alongside that, that agent of change. So every teacher who has been asked to come to a meeting to discuss this, this project, then they will begin to learn, they will begin to question their practice, and they will begin to try out new things. The school as a whole, they will also benefit. If you have a group within the school where the teacher leaders are talking about their projects and, and so on, then that group may constitute a critical mass within the school. It's be it'll begin not only to change the school because of the quality of teaching and learning, but also because of the professional culture within the school. School principals tell me they are very glad that they observe teachers talking more about the quality of teaching and learning. It really changes the culture within the school, opening up practice to, to that critique and challenge. And of course, the students. Ultimately, it's about benefiting young people and children in our schools. And that's really what counts, that the quality of their learning will be improved because of all the activity. So it's these kinds of impacts that we're looking for. Next slide, please. Now think about the, the, the multiplication of the effect. If you have a group, maybe 10 teachers within a school, and in, in the teacher leadership in Kazakhstan initiative, we've tended to have more than 10, maybe 12 or even more. So if you have such a group within a school, maybe it's a, a high school, maybe there are 70 teachers, and each, each of those teachers runs a project, and they involve maybe three other teachers. You can imagine how more than half of the teachers will have been affected by that, those projects over the course of a year. And I know schools where they've been doing this for 15 years, and almost everybody in the school has been touched by these projects. So it really is, uh, for a school principal, it's a it's a win-win situation. It really results in massive change for the school itself. So uh, the change agents themselves within the group, they'll perhaps run uh, professional development sessions for the whole school, and it will make a, make a big difference. And it'll also make a big difference to the network to which they belong, uh, because it'll spread the word about these innovations to other schools. Next slide, please. So in order to do this, there are resource implications. Of course, having facilitators. Now, you may, of course, within a particular initiative, decide to try to, to hire facilitators, but I don't recommend it. I think what the best way is to ask experienced people within the school to take on the role of facilitator. And they do it because they think it's going to improve the quality of practice in their school. So in the Teacher Leadership in Kazakhstan Initiative, it is mainly vice principals who've taken on that role because they know this is good for the school. Now, the other resource is a space to meet, um, a decent room, such as the one we're speaking to you from today. Uh, and in that room, there could be maybe six or seven two-hour workshops during the course of a year. The facilitator should re, you know, organize some coffee and sandwiches or whatever, 
so that teachers come to the, the sessions at the end of their teaching day when they can have a little refreshment and start again. Sometimes colleagues tell us, no, we'd rather do it on a Saturday or whatever, but our experience is it works well if it's part of the regular routine of the school. Then you've got to prepare uh, support for the facilitators. Now, when, when we started the Teacher Leadership in Kazakhstan Initiative, we brought all the facilitators together and we worked with them for a couple of days to help them understand the workshop guides and the tools they had to use and so on. And it's the schools, of course, can then host the network event. This makes it very low cost. Uh, it means that you don't have to spend a lot of money to enable such a, uh, a way of working to get going. Next slide, please. There's a different way, of course. I'm talking largely about the idea of school-based groups with schools hosting groups and so on. But you can imagine a different way. If an organization wanted, for example, to address a particular problem, uh, education for, for, for development or formative assessment or whatever, some particular topic that's of most importance uh, in a particular country. And you could say, okay, we, we're going to ask everybody to do a project which is related to this overall theme. And we'll have to then set up a groups where teachers come from many different schools. Now, it does raise the problem. Where will they meet? In some kind of public building, perhaps? Will it be done partially online? Depends what the territory is, how, how, how big a territory it is you're trying to cover. But you could imagine this could work if you had um, remote schools, for example, not close together, and you wanted to have an online element. Um, it's quite difficult to, to uh, provide the right kind of facilitation in this case, and you would probably have a cost there uh, to make sure that somebody could play that role. But as long as the participating teachers can still feel that their values and concerns are respected and are, 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 are important, then they can contribute to that common focus. Next slide, please. So um, I finish by simply saying, it's been such a delight to see the publication of this book. This tells the story about the teacher leadership in Kazakhstan project. And as you can see, there's various links there you could use to be able to follow up if you want to know more about this. And I'm sure we shall go back and tell you more about these links as we go. If you want to contact us at HeartScan, you can do, and you might want to read my blog, which is also mentioned there. But that's the end of my uh, contribution. Thank you very much for your attention. Let us applaud for uh, such a huge volume of uh, implemented work. Uh, David, thank you very much uh, for your presentation. And uh, indeed, uh, behind these slides, we understand that there is uh, a lot of uh, work uh, that has been performed over a long period of time. And uh, the digest that you have just presented to what has already been implemented, as a matter of fact, is only opening up A lot of uh, work because we understand how much stands uh, behind every word, every uh, sentence, and uh, we hope that we will continue our interaction with you online. And uh, dear colleagues, um, uh, we are passing over to the next session, uh, which is uh, entitled Teacher Leadership in Kazakhstan, and here we will be talking uh, about four-year-long experience of uh, uh, teacher leadership in Kazakhstan. And I would like to turn the floor uh, to uh, Gulbadan Zakaeva, who is the director of uh, Public uh, Education Fund, uh, School for All. Gulbagan, please, the floor is yours. Shall I speak from my seat? Uh, good afternoon, distinguished colleagues, distinguished participants of this webinar. And uh, let me introduce the next uh, uh, speaker, Saule Kalikova. Saule Kalikova is uh, an independent education expert. And uh, Saule is uh, the advisor on the public policy of uh, Soros Foundation Kazakhstan. And she initiated uh, the teacher leadership in Kazakhstan project. This uh, project was uh, developed uh, under the support of uh, Soros Foundation from 2019 through 2022. Um, 
No, no, everybody can hear you. Yeah, some participants uh, write in the chat that they do not hear you. Well, uh, I hope that uh, they will be able to uh, hear me. Good afternoon, distinguished participants of our today's meeting. Um, could you please uh, share the screen with my presentation? Uh, good afternoon, distinguished uh, participants of our today's meeting. And as uh, Gulbadan has already introduced me, uh, I am uh, the independent uh, education policy expert, but throughout a long period of time, uh, for uh, longer than 20 years, I've been working in the uh, Soros uh, Foundation on the issues of educational policy. And uh, I have to mention, uh, probably many participants have already heard that uh, on April 4, there was an official press conference during which it was announced that the uh, Soros Foundation Kazakhstan has been transformed into a new organization. And uh, today it is uh, Central Asian Analytical Think Tank, uh, Sapsanluk. And uh, uh, this abbreviation means uh, Central uh, Asian um, Education Studies. Uh, I am not going to tell you more about this organization. You can Google it and uh, find more information uh, on what uh, this new organization will be dealing with. Today I'm here uh, to uh, tell you uh, how uh, this idea was initiated of uh, bringing to Kazakhstan and uh, to start the development of this project and why uh, this uh, non-positional leadership of uh, teachers uh, in uh, Kazakhstan takes place and I will be talking generally about it, whereas Gulmira will go deep into the details. Uh, next slide, please. As uh, any project, uh, you know, uh, there is uh, a lot of history behind because every project usually has a history. It was uh, uh, started in 2009 for our project and I will say a few more words which are pretty important for our participants and the system of education in general. Those who work on the projects uh, probably know that when you invest in a project, when you uh, launch a certain uh, job, uh, you uh, uh, start uh, uh, thinking about sustainability of the project and we start thinking Okay, we have already trained the teachers, we have already conducted the trainings for school principals, we have done this and that, and uh, what is the sustainability of all our efforts? And you know, throughout a long period of time when we've been working with the principal schools, uh, uh, directors and universities, we, and uh, probably as uh, many other uh, organizations, including international, uh, there were uh, some issues that uh, required solutions. Uh, unsustainability, uh, because uh, people were uh, visiting our trainings and webinars, seminars, uh, they were very happy, they were getting back to their schools and uh, slowly and gradually forgot about all the inputs, uh, because uh, the teachers whom we trained were not supported by the principals, because they were too much overloaded, because they didn't have enough time, etc., etc. Uh, these are routine problems uh, which are faced by every one of you every day. And we wanted to find a kind of uh, entry point to be able to launch a project and find ideas of how to work with the schools. And in 2009, and probably you have uh, noted that uh, David was talking about the development of his project. And uh, um, he said that uh, in uh, 2009, 2011, they started the uh, project in Balkans. And in 2009, uh, there was um, uh, an international conference in Bel Belgrade uh, uh, organized by Education Support Program Open Society Foundations in which I participated and uh, um, in which uh, I've got acquainted with David. And I've heard his uh, report and he presented uh, in our community his concept of uh, non-positional uh, teacher leadership. And uh, when I've heard about it, I could not understand a lot of things, but intuitively I saw that it might be something very, very interesting. And in 2011, we had a meeting with uh, Mr. David Frost in Almaty, and uh, I managed to ask some clarification questions, and we started thinking about possible cooperation ways. And we have decided to start with uh, the initial step. We uh, translated and published the book, uh, Transformation of Education Through Teacher Leadership. I can uh, show this book to you, and uh, I hope that you will have an opportunity to buy it because it is available. If you Google it, uh, uh, you will also be able to uh, read its uh, online version. 
and uh, we have translated it into Russian. And uh, I just wanted to take an opportunity to say that probably Rina Mizovska from uh, Kyrgyzstan, she is the professor from uh, the International University. Well, she used to be uh, the science editor of the Russian version of this book. And back in 2017, the Soros Foundation supported the project pilot. We started in 16 school in Taras, uh, Astana, in the project team, we build the project team based on that. This is Herzcom network, the expertise, the concept, the idea, schools for all, the public educational institution represented by Gulbadan here, our partner organizations who received some grants to implement this initiative. And with the participation of the Nazarbayev University, for science support, project assessment, monitoring, and so on. And back in 2023, just the, the yesterday, the day before yesterday, we presented this book, Kazakhstan Teachers Leadership in Russian and Kazakh. In September, it's gonna be released in Kazakh language as well. Next slide. Why the concept of non-positional leadership? Why is this important? David said that the leadership, leadership of teachers, leadership in education today is basically is a, is a thing of common interest. But this concept has some strong advantage. Uh, the philosophy behind this concept is based on the on such a concept, moral concept that every teacher can become a leader if we create the appropriate conditions for that. So when I learned that closer, I realized that this is based on three key pillars, which are vital for teachers in any country, regardless whether this is Bosnia, Herzegovina, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, or elsewhere. What are these pillars? Uh, they believe in the teacher's power. Number two, practical tools and strategies to support them at the workplace. And three, the effective and respective, respectful union of you know, researchers and practitioners, universities and schools. As soon as we learned about all of this, we realize how this approach is important for Kazakhstan, where in a heavily centralized system of administration, teachers are, the, are at the very bottom of hierarchy. Schools operate like government institutions, not like autonomous professional organizations, while the universities who train teachers, they are poorly connected to the real environment. Yesterday, there was a big international conference at the Kazakh Women's Pedagogical University, which was specifically dedicated to this topic, connection between universities and schools, partnerships between universities and schools. We are, we had lots of interesting presentations, and this is where it was mentioned as one of the issues of ongoing concern. Well, I'll say this very briefly because this is very important as you start one particular project, you need to be part of those processes that are happening in the country. Well, uh, this is a very brief summary, teachers, Kazakhstan's context. You probably know that since the year 2015, we've been having large scale education, school educational reforms. Let me talk about the key points, updated curriculum, updated uh, update and implementation of trilingual uh, inclusive education, per capita financing, and so on. So this particular part, the new contents in education, new curriculum, uh, and the new systems of grading, this is a very serious workload, criteria-based uh, or merit-based assessment. This is a huge workload on teachers. So the question is how to mobilize teachers, how to motivate them to do all of these reforms. In Kazakhstan, we thought a lot about this, and I should say that there, are, there is some really good news about it. Teachers in the past five years, well, this topic was widely discussed, lots of discussions. And as a result, back in 2019, they passed the law on the status of teachers. Basically, it was a major breakthrough in the work with teachers. 
Right now there is a professional standard pedagogue. A different platform, uh, the voice various needs to review the system of a continuous education and qualification upgrading for teachers. So highlighted and bold, well, italic, bold italic, well, they acknowledge the importance of continuous professional development of teachers at their workplaces. Can we have the next slide, please? Of course, we can welcome these new trains, but still we must know that in the practice, the systems such as continuous education in many of its properties, it's remained the same. These are courses of different duration and different topics that are given to teachers outside of school. I think this continuous education system, I think this is the Soviet legacy system in all of our countries. This is the National Santa Oraleo Continuous Education Institute. Some of the universities have licenses to deliver these courses. But the point is teachers must leave their schools. There is this whole infrastructure in those institutions. And the government budget is basically distributed via these institutions. Maybe this is a good idea. And I should say before this presentation, I looked at the most recent stats. Well, over the past three years, we've been seeing a massive scale retraining of teachers because the reform is so complicated that this is a must for them. The system is good if we it would be good if we are confident that the teachers would be supported in schools, uh, being ready to transfer new knowledge to their students, developing the, the, their colleagues and themselves. But as the practice shows, it doesn't happen necessarily. While there is a culture of encouraging individual advanced teachers, so-called advanced teachers, which is not about cooperation, but about competition. Imagine this concept, uh, this um, lack of honor, or honor teachers of the month, like an employee of the month. The whole system of education is built like that. The whole system of education reports best teachers, best school students, best best everything. Can we have another one? So as you know, the next slide I called it, we want to change the system of education, but we need to change school's culture. And there is a continuation, innovations come to the environment, which is ready to adopt them. This is the thesis that Gulmira is going to talk about. This is one of the conclusions of the assessment that was done by the researchers group, the group for assessing the, the assessing this project. We need to change the, the school culture. This is the key message, the and the key argument why the concept of non-positional leadership of teachers is so vital for our countries. Re realistic, not the formal implementation of any innovations in school can only be successful where a conducive environment is created, where teachers in every school share common goals and objectives, discuss their problems, address these problems, help each other out, have the teamwork skills, and while working, get trained. This is what David said in his presentation. Otherwise, well, the internal environment of schools must become a resource for continuous professional education and growth of teachers and for the innovations. Next slide. Well, it seems like there is nothing new about this point. Oh, oh when the system of education, we need to change culture of the schools. It becomes part of the corporate culture of some Kazakh schools. Well, I think in Kyrgyzstan and Tajikistan and Uzbekistan, they do have schools like that too. Yes, there are some practices, but only in individual schools and probably in the best of them. The majority of schools have no internal resources for quality jump, quality change, no external stimulus, no external motivation. The system for the assessment that would motivate them to change their culture, 
I think this is an important point as we speak about the school certification. We need to include some of the new indicators that would motivate schools to create this internal culture. Next slide. If we try to look at the officially voiced points about the review or reforming system of continuous education and acknowledging continuous education of te teachers as the effective way to improve quality of pedagogical cadre, I think this is being discussed in different contexts, but the key question is how to make it happen in the real life and practice. I think there is no common or standardized framework for such a migration. Migration to the idea of continuous professional development at the workplace. But there are three basic prerequisites. Belief in teachers, school autonomy, and internal environment slash culture of schools that promotes and adopts innovations. So successful practice and experience gained through the project leader, teachers' leadership in Kazakhstan can become one of the starting points to build a new model for continuous professional development of teachers in Kazakh schools. While the well-known, uh, easily understandable, inspiring concept, non-positional leadership of teachers gives a chance to everyone, to all of the proactive open for training education schools and teachers change themselves change their schools and change their communities well i would like to finish my presentation with the point that we will have an opportunity to discuss some of these ideas how to support this particular concept whether this is of interest for you what needs to be done to to actually promote this concept any further. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Saule, distinguished colleagues. Well, I'd like to draw your attention that at the end of this session, there will be some time for Q&A. Let me introduce the next speaker, Gulmira Kanai. She is uh, president of Women's Pedagogical University, um, under her support, they did the scientific support of the project in the project implementation, uh, teachers' leadership in Kazakhstan, Goldmira. Hello, distinguished colleagues. For me, this is a great honor to speak to you today. Just yesterday, we finished this interesting conference. We, Kazakh teachers, specifically presidents of teachers' universities, were really concerned about the point whether we prepare or train right teachers. Are they practice-oriented? Will they be able to handle problems they face in schools? And the problems are unique. Not just every school is unique, but every class is unique because of its own, well, specific features. I'm not going to be speaking for a long time, but let me ask my colleagues to go to slide 13. Slide number 13. Well, we can stop on this slide. A majority of my presentation colleagues, well, in Kazakhstan since 2007, we've been having some major reforms in education, specifically the complete revamping of our school curriculum. Since the contents of the curriculum change, we will also need to start teaching teachers. Uh, the this, uh, the level-based system was introduced. The first uh, leader is, uh, first level is designed to ensure the le leadership skills development. But one thing remains the same. This is our perception, understanding and the policies in the area of professional training of teachers, professional development, like in many other post-Soviet Union countries, is perceived as something temporary. Once every three years, you can upgrade your qualification, do your certification every five years. But we as practitioners understand that teachers, they must teach, must tr be trained every day. Every class they do, they face some new knowledge and they change their practices in line with that. In many advanced economies, they use the method of continuous professional development within the organization. 
in the methodology that David Frost introduced us to. Basically, by teacher's training, he means seven key steps. These are very simple steps. At the beginning of the school year, teachers must form mini groups. These mini groups, they don't come out of nowhere. School principals must initiate those schools. Deputy principals, the deputy principal who is responsible for research for the professional development. Ideally, this deputy must facilitate these programs or there could be some experience of successful teachers who have some status amongst colleagues. So basically, they do define the pedagogical consilium. They would define this, will notify the teachers about the availability of such programs and telling them they would like to create these mini groups to develop their leadership. Uh, teachers uh, uh, welcome to volunteer to become out of 300 teachers, maybe 20 teachers can agree Five or six teachers who are highly motivated can join at first. So they will define their specific problems that they faced and face in class. Our main problem was that our teachers look at some global issues. Now, the more you facilitate the process, the more you ask questions, help teachers define their professional problems challenges, they turn this into projects, and they handle these projects throughout the entire school year. The teachers do, are not left on their own. As part of their mini group, with the support of their facilitators, they meet on a regular basis throughout the year. In Kazakhstan, we had six group sessions, three out-of-school meetings, and the final conferences. And this approach really helped us in expansion of the collaboration of teachers, not just in their schools, but also with the colleagues in the other schools. The program was launched in four schools of Kazakhstan, um, basically in the north of Kazakhstan, or different locations, thousands of kilometers between the north, south, east, west, and school principals and teachers. They started uh, the, the implementation of this program in their schools. Throughout the entire school year, facilitators whom we trained uh, as an introductory stage. They would they define problems, they launched their projects, they started to actively, uh, the active involvement of some parents, colleagues to become active participants of the whole process. And at the end of the year, the teacher would present the result of this work. Some teachers would find the answers to their challenges, would be able to address those. Others said they would need more time to continue because the problem was so unique and global in nature that it had more time was needed to tackle it in the future. So basically, we paid more attention not the, on the result of the work, not the outcomes, but the whole process, teacher support, and particularly the colleagues support, or teachers' colleagues support, and how it's done globally. Next slide. So here, every session out of these six sessions has its own goal and objective, goals and objectives. Well, you can see these goals and objectives. Next one, please. So basically, we broke this program by month. So every month, two or three, every two or three weeks, teachers would get together. They had they were on a very tight schedule. Every two weeks, every three weeks, it's okay. So six group sessions were enough. Then we had the big meetings and the final conference. Here on the pictures, you can see the uh, the situation prior to the virus. We had meetings in the cities. Three or four sc schools would get together in one school with some coffee and tea parties where teachers could present the uh, con inception of their projects in the form of posters. We'll speak at the conference where they share the initial knowledge. The second meetings, they would share the middle of their journey and at the final conference, they would share the results of their mini projects. And this really enriches them because by sharing experience, teachers learn they have same problems, the same problems. The, their problems are not unique to them, which makes them and need to continue working on the project. 
year. This is when the pandemic started. We decided not to stop and continue and we found ways. Of course, via Zoom, Microsoft Teams, we started working with teachers. They would be sitting at home. Their facilitators would also provide support online. But uh, for ourselves, probably uh, we have discovered one very positive feature of the pandemic. Uh, I mean, online access to uh, the uh, knowledge of the teachers uh, from the world. And uh, we had uh, uh, trainings uh, in parallel in Egypt, uh, USA, UK, etc. And during such meetings, we had access to such knowledge. And in parallel, there were inter-school meetings in Egypt and uh, in Kazakhstan. And we joined uh, this meeting using the same link. And uh, the teachers from our country, as well as the teachers uh, from Egypt, uh, were sharing their experience and they uh, said uh, that uh, the problems are universal they're every uh, the same and of course it it inspired our um, teachers uh, from foreign countries as well uh, here uh, you see um, the um, way we were conducting our inter-school meetings in uh, uh, london in uh, uh, egypt and kazakhstan and here uh, we are sharing the experience uh, uh, of uh, collaboration uh, between the teachers uh, using various methodologies, and it was very interesting. And I would like uh, to say a couple of uh, words about the cases. The first one is the teacher of physics from school number 83 uh, from Astana. At that time, it was called still Nur Sultan, and uh, he was very much interested in the development of ICT uh, skills uh, uh, for improvement of the learning process and uh, uh, how uh, the um, this uh, can also help and uh, then the teacher understood that it is not a problem of the teacher uh, of the uh, um, students it is the problem of the teachers and he has decided to expand it to the colleagues with whom he's been working but then the pandemic broke out and he didn't know what to do and uh, he was wondering how to continue implementation of the project and he understood that he can uh, put together a website and uh, uh, can uh, promote his project on the international level and on the national level. And many uh, uh, teachers uh, were um, asking him, how do you teach uh, physics uh, to your students in online mode? And uh, then he started conducting various uh, webinars and he started meeting with his colleagues from rural and urban uh, teachers. Uh, and uh, he uh, established a kind of a mini community of the teachers of physics. And now he's the deputy principal of the school. And and uh, there are a lot of such uh, stories. Uh, they're really endless. Uh, uh, when uh, the teachers, in spite of all the difficulties of pandemic, they were coping uh, with their problems and they were managed to address their uh, everyday routine problems. Here, I just wanted to say a few words about monitoring and uh, the um, analysis of the input of this uh, program. It was uh, a combined uh, study um, so there were um, uh, participants of this uh, program who participated in it and here we see that the greatest number of the participants are uh, the uh, teachers uh, of uh, mainly primary schools the facilitators were uh, represented by experienced teachers and as you see here on this slide uh, in the majority of cases we had a lot of uh, uh, deputy principals here uh, you see the direction of the project that was conducted by about uh, 500 teachers at the end of the program and the majority of the projects uh, were uh, dedicated to uh, the problems of the um, primary education and uh, language education and here we found out very interesting results because here you see various blocks uh, of issues uh, questions that we were um, forwarding to the questions and we drew very interesting conclusions here you see in uh, English uh, the graph, but uh, the question was uh, whether uh, the participation of this uh, in this program changed anything in the leadership potential of the teachers. And we see that about 51% uh, uh, of the coloration uh, is uh, between the involvement of the teachers and the development of the skills and the teachers to influence the other teachers uh, based on which we can, uh, let's say, create uh, leadership. And uh, uh, what was uh, really very interesting that every initiatives uh, or uh, the development of various uh, skills or the professional uh, development, everything is uh, actually boiling down to collaborative 
and the professional culture at school if there is no collaboration between the teachers if uh, one of the teachers is uh, hiding away the materials from the uh, another one if the principal is not supporting collaboration inside his organization any type of new experience will never uh, be uh, rooted in the schools uh, this is what we uh, dis uh, found out in the framework of our uh, study and here uh, we are giving an example of correlation uh, between different factors uh, in the framework of our research and uh, uh, here you see uh, the graph in kazakh uh, and uh, um, you know uh, we see uh, what happened uh, between the beginning the end and uh, what was happening uh, uh, in the middle of the uh, project and here you see the uh, uh, quotes uh, of the teachers in Kazakh. I'm sorry because many of you probably will not be able to understand it, but many teachers uh, um, stated when we were asking what is leadership is the stance. Uh, the director, uh, uh, the principal of the school, the deputy uh, principal, uh, or the head of the methodological uh, department, uh, uh, this is what they stated, but uh, at the end, uh, uh, the teacher said the more uh, responsibility we assume, the more initiatives uh, we are putting forth. And when we uh, resolve any concrete problems inside our community, the more experience we are gaining and the more impact we can um, actually uh, have uh, on our uh, uh, colleagues on uh, other teachers and uh, of course it is uh, our practice through which we will be able to expose our leadership and uh, of course uh, we had some difficulties because uh, every and any project first and foremost uh, is uh, about what failed uh, first and uh, foremost the identification of the professional problem was very difficult for us maybe it is the fault of the uh, university education maybe uh, because some uh, uh, certain things have to be studied uh, on the level of the schools because many uh, teachers decided to pick up absolutely global, huge uh, uh, problems that were not in any which way connected to their own practice with uh, their school. And we had to navigate them and uh, bring them to the problem of their schools, of their classes, and uh, uh, narrow down the um, topics and the uh, project itself and uh, uh, of course unfortunately we do not have any empirical studies in the Kazakh and uh, uh, the international literature is not translated very often this is uh, why we wanted to facilitate the access of the teachers to various resources Kazakhstani and international and we understand very well that in many post-soviet countries there is a kind of uh, rate-based uh, systems and uh, the um, uh, teachers are fighting for uh, the number of hours that they're teaching and of course it is uh, affecting negatively the um, professional culture at school uh, because they're trying to get uh, the maximum number of hours uh, and uh, of course uh, uh, it um, is uh, uh, really uh, negatively impacting on the professional development of the organization and uh, this is why we believe that probably uh, we really have to uh, switch uh, probably from the man hour system to the uh, fixed uh, wage uh, system so that the teachers uh, will be able to uh, spend some uh, time on their professional development and then to get back home by 5 p.m. Of course, there are some other peculiarities about which you will uh, ask uh, me probably, and I will be happy to entertain these questions. And of course, it is very important to have a facilitator at school. It might be a principal or deputy principal. Why? Because uh, uh, somebody from the uh, school uh, leaders uh, and the managers will have to understand the importance of enhancing uh, capacity of their teachers because at the beginning many principals or their deputies uh, were uh, very skeptical about this project they said that uh, yeah there is some new projects but uh, the more they were getting involved as facilitators into this process the better uh, they have seen uh, the result and the impact of uh, this activity on uh, their teachers and they started sharing the experience and the knowledge about their project they, because it was a systemic work that they were uh, conducting in the framework of this initiative. And since uh, the teachers were reaching out to the international global level, uh, the atmosphere inside the organization was also improving. And uh, of course, uh, we uh, continued uh, this uh, project. And here you see the map uh, in which the project was uh, developing in parallel. And here you see the main participants of the project. 
And uh, um, in principle, this is it. And if you have any questions, uh, please, uh, you can uh, write your questions to my email addresses. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot, dear Gulmira. Thanks uh, a lot, um, uh, dear uh, um, participants. Uh, we would like to show you the video in which uh, the participants of the project, the pedagogues from various regions of Kazakhstan are sharing their experience of how this uh, uh, a TLK uh, program uh, changed the professional culture uh, in their schools and what changed in their pedagogical activities. Я Курман Кулова, консулу, фасилитатор школы гимназии номер пять из города Тарас. И как фасилитатор я хочу сказать, что лидерство учителей – это основа профессионального развития учителей, которое напрямую связано с образовательной деятельностью и с их взаимодействием. По сравнению с такими формами профессионального развития, как участие на конференциях, семинарах, обучающих курсах в данной программе, профессиональное развитие происходит внутри школы через работу учителей над своей... Uh, good afternoon, distinguished colleagues. My name is Auraspaeva uh, Gulnara Malikovna, and I'm the deputy head uh, from the gymnasium uh, school number 17 from Kokshitao, and I'm in charge on, of uh, methodology in uh, uh, the TLK project. We've been involved uh, during the period of five years, and during this uh, um, work uh, in the project, uh, we concluded that teacher leadership is a tool is a possibility to facilitate uh, uh, the development of uh, uh, the school uh, and uh, our professional level and our practice and during the work as a facilitator uh, of this project I've seen how the teachers are changing how their approaches are changing and how uh, their confidence uh, self-confidence is changing as well therefore uh, the teacher uh, when uh, the teacher decides to independently resolve his or her professional problems um, is uh, uh, participating in the development of, of uh, his or her school. Therefore, the teacher is not uh, expecting any support or help from the administration, uh, but uh, is undertaking an initiative uh, in, uh, in partnership and uh, in collaboration with uh, uh, their colleagues. The teachers were developing their own uh, strategies, which consequently had a very nice opportunity to become, to transform into a proprietary program. And uh, they were also developing uh, inclusive education as well as methodological work and social issues. And when I was working as uh, the regional coordinator of this particular project, I've seen that uh, the colleagues from uh, rural schools uh, uh, were on the equal footing with the teachers from urban schools, and uh, they had uh, uh, a level of professionalism, uh, even though uh, these uh, schools uh, are experiencing some uh, particular problems unlike uh, urban schools. And uh, this is why when we are talking about uh, teacher leadership uh, uh, in Kazakhstan, we understand that it is very, we understand that it is very timely and uh, it is so necessary to change uh, the uh, culture uh, in sc at school. And uh, it is possible to be uh, achieved uh, by every teacher who really wants to continue developing and uh, participate in the development of his or her school. And I believe that leadership uh, means uh, the development of uh, modern uh, Kazakhstani educational system and schools. And there are some certain points uh, that can uh, drastically change uh, the structure of our methodological work at schools. Uh, understanding that now we have a possibility to use uh, various uh, project tools with uh, which we've been already working and we understand that there are some acceptable opportunities to use them in our everyday work, in our methodological work. And by doing so, we will be enhancing the development of our uh, uh, modern school. I'm uh, uh, Alim Janova uh, Morgaziva. I'm from Balkashian uh, Settlement in 2021 and 2020. Our school for the first ever time was participating in TLK project. And thanks to this project, we changed drastically our vision of the role of the teacher in the modern 
education process because we changed our attitude to the world leadership and leader. Uh, what has to be um, changed, uh, who and how should do it? Uh, we received the answers to these questions from inside and every participant of the project understood uh, that they are not just implementing the state program, but they have a huge potential of transformation and development. And uh, irrespective of the uh, experience of work and the title, even a, a fresher, even a, a new um, a teacher can also influence on his or her own practice and the practice of uh, uh, his or her colleagues and um, constant search for new ways of teaching and uh, uh, resolution of various pedagogical uh, tasks was always an inseparable uh, part of the duties of the teacher. But now it is more understandable, clear and uh, uh, transparent because we had the full uh, uh, toolbox of instruments and uh, we had uh, follow up uh, by facilitators and coordinators of the uh, project and uh, the uh, management of uh, school, the school administration is also very happy about it because it enables the teachers to find the solutions. And uh, in spite of a uh, huge workload, our teachers are open to everything new. They are ready for innovations and for the development. And if there are some uh, conditions already uh, created at school and uh, the um, teachers are supported, uh, the uh, collective of the uh, the team of the teachers uh, uh, starts uh, self-training and therefore there is an, an uninterrupted continuous uh, uh, improvement of professionalism. And uh, uh, therefore it brings uh, a lot of very uh, uh, nice uh, um, results uh, because we have uh, more opportunities for collective and individual professional uh, growth. Uh, at the same time, there is uh, created uh, a very important atmosphere of uh, uh, support and uh, uh, friendship. Uh, my name, I'm uh, Shubin uh, Valeria from Gymnasium Number 40 from Taraz. I'm the teacher of English and I'm a facilitator of TLK project. And uh, I've been working in this project for the period of three years. What did this project bring us? Uh, it uh, gave us a lot uh, creativity uh, to take a look at ourselves from uh, outside and to see what, uh, what else we have to work on. It gave us a very nice opportunity to communicate and to uh, discuss with each other and uh, to feel that we can actually achieve everything. And we as teachers, as creative people, we have to um, uh, continue uh, um, getting trained at all times. Uh, we have to develop and uh, continue to do so. And uh, uh, we have got uh, unforgettable experience of how we can grow uh, in our own eyes and in the eyes of our children. And in this particular project, we understood. And uh, I'm uh, telling not only on my personal behalf, I'm also uh, talking on behalf of all my colleagues. We understood that our possibilities as uh, teachers are unlimited. We understood that our uh, children are uh, unique and only us, uh, only we can uh, give them an opportunity to continue growing and be talented and creative children. And we are really very grateful to this project. We are grateful uh, for a possibility to be unique and to open uh, something new for ourselves, to have new discoveries and to achieve our goals. Thank you very much to TLK Project. Thank you very much, uh, dear colleagues. Uh, we have uh, 20 minutes for Q&A session. And uh, I uh, would like uh, first to answer the questions that we have already received in our chat. Uh, so uh, if uh, somebody is willing to entertain these questions, please, David, maybe you. Uh, Gulmira, you have already answered the questions as well. Okay, uh, distinguished colleagues, uh, you can ask uh, your questions right now. To all our three speakers, please raise your hands. Okay, I would like to answer the question uh, from Saulia uh, from Kyrgyzstan. Uh, whether or not during the work in this uh, project uh, there were any cases uh, when the culture uh, at school has changed. Well, you have already heard the um, opinions of the teachers. And uh, in a rural uh, school, a very young teacher um, said uh, very correctly that uh, we 
uh, changed uh, our attitude to the work. And uh, there were uh, some very important ideas that were expressed by these young teachers and uh, why this project is really very uh, interesting because uh, it is uh, focusing on practice and it gives uh, concrete tools to support the teachers. And uh, this uh, uh, new uh, young uh, teacher said that our process has become easier, understandable, and uh, uh, more structured and available. And uh, this is uh, exactly uh, what uh, we are talking about, uh, because uh, this is a, a collective thinking uh, uh, project. And uh, the facilitator from Kokshitao in our project also mentioned the same. We, uh, the project process definitely has become more structured, and this project gives a lot of food for thought in order to radically change the structure of methodological work in school. Oh, some very interesting question. The concept of culture, organizational culture, this is uh, as a vast notion as possible. It needs to be researched, use various dimensions to it. Let me give you one particular observation of mine as part of this project. First of all, this program has a very quick impact and you can see some real changes in schools where there is a great support coming from the school's management. Specifically, schools principals. Oh, well, the school principal in that school would sit down with teachers. Everyone would have a cup of tea, and over tea they would discuss their projects. So basically, I looked at the I look at this problem. The school principal she would never say why you're raising this issue. This is not good. What would people think? Everything's fine, everything was okay. The same identical example in the other place where teachers uh, at the school meeting said that they had this particular problem. After this, the school principal would call the deputy head and said it's not appropriate to discuss such things. So basically the willingness to talk about the existing issues this is how um, this is in a way a reflection of the changes in the school culture and the attitude to teachers on a regular basis. But, but mostly the school principal's role, as they said throughout the interview, this is not being on the way of those teachers, not being on the way of those facilitators. They support them, but not running ahead of them. No micromanagement. Well, not acting like a dark cardinal, but saying it uh, to colleagues, I support you. So this message is very important. But the most important role belongs to deputy school principal, the uh, school administrator, because she can, she or he conveys all of these objectives to teachers. When those administrators who never talk to teachers, actually, when they start using the tools of this program started the facilitation process, started setting goals and objectives, they realized that you can use a different style of management, different type of leader, style of leadership, where you don't need to order people to do this or do that. Instead, by asking the right questions, you can basically guide people to get to the right answers, which has a much greater impact on the project sustainability, sustainability of any change in the culture of collaboration that emerges as part of this program. The unique example, School 17 of the city of Kakshitao, the deputy school principal had some right moral values, but she had no tools and she didn't understand what the facilitation would be but by means of its commitment to program its uh, her enthusiasm by using these tools at the end of the year at the interview she said these are very interesting tools they help me in my day to day's work when i invite teachers for some meeting i don't tell them don't order them to do things i don't know i know you have this potential what do you think about this so she talks to people to teachers in the form of a dialogue, not giving out orders. So thank you for this question. Thank you, Gulmira. The next question comes from Kula Shalebekova. She's asking whether, do I understand this right, that the coordination of work of facilitators is a part, is a duty of the school administrators. Is the autonomous approach possible? Well, some pretty interesting question. I already said this and you've seen it in my slides. Some part of the facilitators 
Some of them were deputy school principals. They have headmasters uh, while they would basically define the time and the key principles. And there were instances when some experienced teachers were in charge of the progress, but without any actual any actual power. They couldn't really distribute teachers' time or they simply used their reputation. They had no impact, no admin impact whatsoever. But because of the immense knowledge, uh, basically the, the proper influence upon their colleagues and upon the school administration, they were able to convince them it's enough to allocate some time, one hour every two weeks, to, def to find some room for the teachers, to enable them to discuss their issues through within which the build their projects. While it wasn't really easy, teachers, they had to develop their duties. They have to do their duties, but they do this on their own moral basis. They have tight schedule, but teachers manage to find, find some time out of their busy schedule. So it would be nice if the school administration would take greater responsibility and because there will be some, definitely some output in this output would be really beneficial for the school, for its rating, for the headmasters and administrators. They should be able to escalate or understand where this program should be headed to with the program designed for continuous professional development of their teachers. Let me help Gulba Don because in fact, there are lots of questions out there. We've got a question from Irina Nizovska about a humanistic pedagogy and humanistic psychology. Well, this is a change of culture, the change of teaching culture in class. Maybe we should start with, this, with the students. In your university, how do you implement this in your educational process? Well, I'm president of the National Pedagogical University based in Almaty. And what's unique, it's a women's pedagogical university. Well, this is the very interesting thing. Uh, well, uh, the future researcher handled this project. For me, it was easy because at that time I was in the researcher's positions. I had no admin duties. Now I'm subject to this administrative duties. And you look at this through the prism of the admin duties. Well, such initiatives, they must start uh, at your bench at the university where, where you study, they need, you need to take some time and these technologies must be implemented as the teachers get trained. Well, uh, this is the second year of my admin work. Uh, year one of my complicated journey, interesting but complicated journey, journey we spend time on the admin part of our work. The university has 8,100 students and several hundred employees so this year too second year of the program i can't you know uh, single-handedly decide that we'll need to do this educational program even being at uh, this university's president i have no such right and um, there are also some government standards i have about the thousands of professors who have their own understanding on their own subjects so having an impact on them should only be done via non-positional leadership this is the only way because they are as professional as we are. But at our level, at the admin level, as part of the government program, they give us complete freedom to choose the final work for the graduate students. And we decided to start this with uh, little things. Initially, to teach students to focus on their class and basically to do some practice-oriented research. So instead of the, their diploma work, they do the group lesson studies. This is the final project uh, by which they complete their study. This year we did the pilot group, the best university graduates, about 200 students who did their lesson studies. Just prior to David and some other universities from Cambridge, they presented their posters and presentations. They really enjoyed this experience because this small journey helped them to focus on children in class. And as far as I assume, well, these lesson studies, they're designed to study some specific classes in a particular collaboration setup. So this experience is gonna be very useful for them as they go to school to do their teaching. They have some team working skills now. 
defining questions, problems, I think these skills are already available to them. So the next step would be some collaborations amongst our professors who could become some sort of an external facilitation to support this program and internal facilitation to work in school with schools. So we have this idea. Thank you for this question. Yes, this year we're launching this new program called Educational Leadership Program. And there are some elements of this program, specifically development of the organizational culture, school school culture in particular. Thank you, Gulmira. Next question is how to get this toolkit for the facilitation. Yes, I'm happy to address the question of the facilitation toolkit. So uh, we developed this in, in HeartsCam over many years. Um, originally, I published a couple of books in 1997 and again in 2003. The difficulty with publishing uh, a handbook is that things change. As we learn to do this better, we keep reviewing the guidelines, keep reviewing the workshop activities. They get better every year. So we stopped publishing books uh, about it. Rather, we uh, construct the handbook every year, we review it every year, and in the, the teacher leadership in Kazakhstan uh, example, we uh, worked with Gomira, who helped us with the, the translation and to review the material so they were particularly suitable for the Kazakhstan uh, context. So they do exist, these uh, guides and, and these tools in Russian and Kazakh. Uh, but again, through our experience of TLK, we would want to review those uh, and, and update them and so forth. However, um, we have the basis of a toolkit that could be used in the future. I would want to stress, though, the design of the materials at the moment does not allow them to be used in a freestanding way. The important thing is that we work with people who are going to be the facilitators to induct them, to enable them to understand how to use the toolkit. Now, of course, if we wanted to just put the material on the web, on the internet and say to people here, help yourself, that would, that, I think that would create difficulties. I think it would be much more sensible to work with an organization, to work with potential facilitators and to say, let us talk you through these materials. Let us talk to you about how to use these materials well. I think that's probably the best way to use it. Um, there are intellectual property issues to consider, of course, when setting up initiatives and we had arrangements within TLK initiative to deal with that. I'll leave that there. Thanks for watching. Next question is about this is from Kulash Alibekova. She is asking, Gulmira, do you have your own concept of a project? Uh, have you been able to implement all of the points? Thank you for this project concept question. Initially, I talked about the uh, teacher's development uh, project philosophy. So basically we implemented all of these steps as part of this three, three year TLK project. Speaking about my own research, um, uh, it was a mixed type of research where we used some online polling, we used interviews, used focus groups, and of course, we used some observations of, uh, of the sessions that facilitators did in schools. Thank you. The next question is to Gulmira. This is from Diana Manasova. Can you prepare a specialized program for facilitators training in your university? Well, prior to that, there was this question. Maybe I didn't read this correctly, and maybe I didn't respond correctly either. Facilitators, well, facilitators can be trained, but like we having some graduates, we have very few people trained, but there are thousands and thousands of schools out there, uh, and there are thousands of headmasters providing no support to their teachers, no facilitation. So extra courses should be organized, not only at the bachelor's level, but also the practicing teachers in schools. We do these courses, but practitioners, they prefer courses that are delivered by Orleo or the government, government owned entities. I think this is pretty much needed. 
concepts. Can you suggest for the implementation of mutual cooperation between the university and school? David, question for you. you. Yes, in the chat. Yeah. In English, yeah. Sorry, could you just repeat for me what uh, What uh, specific action steps can you suggest for the implementation of mutual cooperation between the university and the school? Hmm. Yes, that's a very good question. Um, my work over time has been as a university academic, uh, but there are issues when universities want to work uh, within this sort of field. Universities have their own uh, priorities and their own needs uh, and vested interest. And so it's quite a challenge for universities to be able to get behind this sort of work. And I do think it's possible that somebody in a university could play an important role in coordinating a program and providing the kind of uh, induction program, training if you like, but that, that sort of induction program for facilitators. But of course, it would be very important for the university staff to first be inducted themselves and to understand what facilitative methods uh, are like and how they work. Our experience is that many university academics find that very hard to do because they are so accustomed to being the source of expertise, the source of knowledge, and they do tend to want to tell people what they should think rather than to become more facilitative themselves. So I do think it's a challenge when we think about the university role in relation to a program like this. Um, but it, it is something that should be explored. I think it requires genuine partnership between university and school people who can come to a, a clear, a balanced and negotiated understanding about how to proceed with such a project. In, in our project in the UK, uh, we have been very dominated by teachers who are, are part of the organization. And if I get fancy ideas that they don't think are very practical, they tell me. They say, no, David, this is no good. Think about it this way. And I say, okay, I'm sorry. Yes, I understand. So it's got to be balanced. It's got to be, you know, not the universities telling everybody what's what, but a balanced way of working. Thank you, David. Uh, one more question. We run out of time. So one more question. I'm not really sure what uh, anyone's going to be taking this. One of the objectives was the school's autonomy uh, as part of this project. Did you achieve any school autonomy at all? Well, I wonder about the institutional support of the teachers' facilitation in schools. Let me take this one, some pretty interesting question. Well, if I interpreted your question correctly, institutional, you mean then the university professor comes and helps to develop facilitators and facilitators implement the program. Did I get this right? If I got it right, the, the researchers say that when external people come to an organization and start developing something and then they leave, normally these programs fall apart after they leave. So the unique feature of this program is that the external experts in this case these are university representatives. They work specifically as a co-facilitators. They support these facilitators and facilitators take into account uh, the unique features of their organizations and they start implementing all of the ideas they develop together with the university professors. But when facilitators uh, get some skills in it and become experienced, because they to repeat it from year to year, the end is this or that, normally they take over uh, all of these functions and start handling this without any external assistance. The only problem, the scope of work that the facilitators must handle apart from their day-to-day -day duties, organization of school meetings, this is where support is needed. And often our facilitators say that it would be nice to get some extra benefits. They believe this is their extra role. Although this is their actual duty, this is part of their job description. They must develop their scientific science potential at the school. And normally it's focused on students, but they forget it's also focused on teachers. It would be nice to have some sort of an extra pay, extra benefit for teachers. This should be done at the level of the government's budget funding and organizing meetings well if facilitators establish good uh, repo with their schools they can organize those meetings 
and facilitators uh, they actively and successfully can implement their programs and schools. Thank you, Gulmira Norbeck. We are now moving to the next part. Uh, would you like to give some floor to David? Well, lots of questions, a little time. David, there was this question about academic performance of students. Is this associated with the teacher's skills? If you could comment on that a little bit. I can address that one, I think. Um, obviously, uh, what we want to know is, do does students' learning improve? Um, and you could, of course, employ an expensive researcher to try to address that question. But more productive, when we advise the teachers about how to design a project, we suggest to them that they need to have, as part of their project plan, the means to know what the effect of their innovations are. So that you would, as a facilitator, you would say, so how will you know if learning is improving? What, what are your strategies of finding out if, if students' learning is improving? And teachers become, therefore, very good at finding some tools, finding some techniques for getting feedback from students, but also for looking at what students do in the classroom, their productive work, to look at the level um, by, by assessing students' work as well. It's partly looking at not just test results, but looking at students' work, but also observing teachers' attitude in school, their engagement with learning tasks in classrooms, and making judgments about whether this is genuinely an improvement in the quality of learning or not. And of course, at the end of the year, the teacher would want to uh, explain to the school principal, look, this has been my project. This is the change I have seen in the classroom. And here is the evidence that the students are now getting the benefit. So we, we, we help every teacher to become not only an agent of change, but an evaluator of change too. Thank you, David. I just wanted to clarify, and uh, Dolmira has already mentioned that one of the main tasks uh, was to achieve autonomy of the schools and uh, what was the autonomy of schools in the framework of the project. School autonomy uh, cannot be a task of any project. School autonomy is uh, the result of uh, the uh, government program. And uh, the main uh, purpose of uh, TLK project is to make sure that uh, there will be a contribution into the development of the internal school culture. And uh, in my turn, in the, my presentation on one of the last slides, I said that the precondition of introduction of continuous professional development of teachers, uh, what, uh, the uh, prerequisite uh, for this is uh, school autonomy. Of course, it is um, a big uh, political process. And in Kazakhstan, we have already started talking about it, uh, which is already a good thing. And uh, gradually, step by step, I hope uh, we will be able to uh, reach uh, this goal and uh, we uh, will get uh, we will introduce the mechanism of uh, per capita financing. It's one of the tools which is uh, uh, supporting uh, the uh, school autonomy. Maybe in other countries, the situation might be different, but I would like to say that school autonomy in Kazakhstan is not yet achieved. Thank you very much, uh, distinguished participants. Thanks a lot for very interesting questions. And thanks a lot uh, uh, to the speakers for very uh, detailed answers. Norbek, let's pass over to the next session. Yes, uh, thank you very much, Gulbadan. And uh, uh, we received a lot of uh, very interesting questions. Unfortunately, we did not manage to answer all of them. Distinguished participants and colleagues, the point here is that uh, you see uh, that uh, our presentations and uh, discussions are actually aiming at the change of the paradigm. And uh, as a rule, uh, could you please uh, mute your mic? Somebody has turned on the mic. And uh, as a rule, we will have to continue this uh, discussion, this communication. And uh, in the chat, we have already shared various uh, materials uh, that were developed uh, not only on Kazakhstan's project, but uh, on other uh, projects in other countries of the world. And therefore, to form a deeper understanding, we will strongly recommend you to, to, uh, to familiarize yourselves with these materials and uh, maybe to scrutinize uh, this project.
Uh, so, Leah, thank you very much. And Gulbadan, uh, thank you very much as well. And with this, I would like to sum up um, and uh, to make a few uh, comments uh, regarding our meeting and the project. The point is that this uh, initiative, TLK, TLK is uh, directly meeting the requirements and priorities that were announced during the national statements uh, in the summit on transformation of education of all four countries and these uh, priorities uh, are dealing with uh, the quality of training and education of teachers and therefore we can uh, propose this initiative uh, that will be supporting these activities uh, the next slide please Timur, the next slide, please. In addition to the initiative that we were discussing today, uh, we also have, and I don't remember who was uh, talking about it, looks like Saule. There are some teachers who are already uh, working along these lines because uh, they are pretty creative. They are trying to address the problems and resolve um, independently uh, with uh, the help of their colleagues, maybe uh, some problems. And uh, we uh, have already met with such uh, teachers in our countries who are developing and introducing into their classes uh, the um, um, main uh, points on uh, sustainable uh, development. Uh, goals and uh, uh, there are some uh, uh, classes uh, that the teachers are developing for inclusivity, environmental protection, um, empathy, a multicultural uh, approach, etc. And therefore, we have some projects that we have to combine, and uh, we have to uh, get uh, synergy from the cooperation among all these teachers. And we have to show that indeed there is such a, a concept as um, non-positional teacher leadership, and they can uh, work uh, um, in accordance with this initiative. We are really very glad to hear that in the regions, uh, there is already available a critical mass of teachers who are changing their pedagogical practice, which uh, usually is uh, uh, very difficult uh, to change. And uh, this is uh, in our context, and this is what we've been discussing more than once today. But nevertheless, the teachers uh, require our further uh, support in terms of uh, uh, transformation of their professionalism and uh, improvement of uh, education quality. And uh, therefore, during our upcoming meetings, we have to think how we can combine our efforts uh, to support this initiative and the teachers uh, to um, set uh, this environment for them. And finally, uh, the last slide uh, David has already mentioned if you are interested to participate in the um, TLK project, and uh, here uh, we do not set any frames, whether uh, it will be on the national or regional level, you can send to us your proposals uh, to the following email address. You see the email address that we created specifically for the purpose uh, purposes of uh, uh, TLK project in Central Asia. And uh, all these uh, questions will be received by David Gulmira, Saole Gulbadan uh, Dushun, uh, whom uh, we did not introduce to you because he is representing the uh, Nazarbayev uh, University. And uh, he is uh, one of our uh, advocates of this initiative. Uh, we can close up. It's been wonderful. I'm so thrilled with the whole thing, and I'm so looking forward to working with colleagues in other countries in this region. Is there anything else you'd like to say, Nurbek? Um, colleagues, we will be Dear colleagues, uh, we will keep in touch uh, because uh, it is not uh, the first and it is not the last meeting. Uh, this is why we will be planning a series of meetings. Uh, which uh, will be uh, focusing, as far as I understood, based on the proposals uh, received from every work group uh, 
uh, it is understood that everybody would like to have uh, the meetings to be more focused on the concrete problems. Uh, we will take into consideration your uh, comments and proposals. Thanks a lot and see you again. Thank you very much uh, to the speakers. Uh, thanks a lot to everybody. Thank you. Goodbye.